Hello and welcome to Right Now for Saturday the 25th of November 2017, I'm Tim Wilms. Queensland Election Day is here in what has been a three-way race between Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk's Labor government, the Liberal National Opposition led by Tim Nichols, and Pauline Hanson's One Nation led by LNP defector Steve Dixon. The latest polling has Labor predicted to scrape back home to majority government. It is fair to say that both the major parties have led uninspiring campaigns. Anastasia Palaszczuk has been dogged all campaign by a decision to veto a federal loan for the Adani coal mine. Most people have seen that decision as part of a strategy to fend off the Greens in inner Brisbane. Tim Nichols has, hasn't been able to effectively make the case for change. It will be interesting to see if One Nation can turn its polling numbers, which have been as high as 20% of the primary vote, into seats tonight. Make sure you tune in to our live stream for all the results as they come in. Papua New Guinea authorities have successfully removed all the men who were refusing to leave the former Manus Island Detention Centre. The Australian government had built a new $10 million facility elsewhere on the island, but the men and the refugee advocates back here in Australia tried to use this as another opportunity to attack Australia's strong border protection policies and try to break the government's resolve. Refugee activists in Australia have been staging disruptive protests in our major cities about Manus for the past three weeks, including driving a car on the Flemington racetrack on Melbourne Cup today. It's a great way to win the public over by causing them inconvenience, but Immigration Minister Peter Dutton, as we would expect of him, has stood firm. He knows the Australian people are on his side, and any sign of weakness in an asylum seeker policy will see the boats return. The Turnbull government has descended into even further disarray with a number of damaging cabinet leaks. They highlighted there was division within cabinet over whether the government should reverse its opposition to a royal commission into the banks, given the threats from national MPs to cross the floor. Malcolm Turnbull and Peter Dutton were reported as open to the idea, while Scott Morrison was against. Given that the leak would have been intended to damage all three men, fingers pointed at Julie Bishop as the leaker. She has denied this and supported an investigation into the leak. Regardless of who is behind the cabinet leaks, they are a sign that as the government is on death row. Just before Tony Abbott was deposed in 2015, he was also plagued by a series of damaging cabinet leaks. Who knows, it could be the same person behind those leaks as was the case in 2015. On Wednesday afternoon, Victoria's Upper House passed a bill to legalise assisted dying in that state, making it the first state in Australia to do so. It was legal in the Northern Territory for a brief period in 1996 before the laws were overturned by the federal government. Premier Daniel Andrews claimed this was the most conservative euthanasia laws in the world, as it will only be available to people with a terminal illness with less than six months to live, and they must be from Victoria. However, the bill was opposed by the Australian Medical Association, as killing their patients goes against their medical ethics. Despite the safeguards promise, there will certainly be many cases of vulnerable people uh, feeling pressured or being pressured to end their lives, and perhaps even people who may yet survive a terminal illness undergoing assisted dying. Now that one state has legalised it, we know that the push in other states will become more aggressive. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and check back here again soon to see what is happening right now there.